So in this video, we're going to take a look at measuring with precision. And that is to say, measuring, using measuring, measuring devices and reading them with the highest level of precision that that device can offer you, whether it's a meter stick or a ruler, a thermometer, a graduated cylinder, any type of device where you need to read off the value, not a digital device, but a device in which you'd have to read off the, the value. It might seem simple, you just read off whatever the, the reading on the ruler or the graduated cylinder, but it is a little more complicated because all devices have limitations. That limitation is called its reading error. And once you get down to the level of the reading error, then it becomes a little bit tough and you usually have to estimate that last digit. And so in this video, I wanna show you how you, would, how you would do that. Now I will give you a set of specific rules that you can kind of follow to guide you. But before we start looking at the rules for this, let me give you an example using a couple of special rulers. So we're not gonna look at the inches side. We'll stay up here on the side that says centimeters. But if you notice that this ruler is kind of special in the sense that it is very crude. So there are no markings on the ruler until you get to the 10 centimeter mark. The next marking would be at 20 centimeters. So I'm gonna use this ruler, which has very low precision, it has a very large reading error because there are very few marks on it. And I'm going to use it to measure this device. And so we're gonna measure this device on a couple of different rulers. And as a result, you'll kind of get a sense of what it means to, to make a measurement using a measuring device with the highest level of precision that that device can offer you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the device's edge over here on the left side as best as I can on the zero. Okay, and now you can see it's not exactly 10 centimeters. If it was exactly 10 centimeters, this would be much easier to use but because it doesn't quite make it to the 10 centimeter mark, that means I'm going to have to estimate that centimeter number. Now the question you should always ask yourself when you have to read a digit or you have to estimate that last digit is, is it more or less than the halfway point? So using my eyes, I would estimate that the halfway point is probably somewhere around here. And I can see this device is clearly much longer than five centimeters, which would be the halfway point right here. So if it's more than five centimeters or more than five, then I would estimate the number to be six, seven, eight, or nine. If it was less than the halfway point, I would say that it was one, two, three, or four. And of course, if it's exactly on the halfway point, then I, I would estimate that that next number must be a five. So looking at this one, I feel like I'm very close to the 10, but not quite there. So for me personally, I would estimate that the length of this using this measuring device, with very low precision, is probably nine centimeters, and that's about the best that I can do. So in this measurement, the only number that I can get is actually an estimated number. Now, it might seem bad to estimate, but that's actually a good thing. It's a very important tool in science to power to make estimations, because my only other choice is to either pick 10 or zero. Now, if I said that this device was 10 centimeters long, I, I know that's not correct. There's no way that this is 10 centimeters long. So even though nine might not be perfectly correct, I mean, it might be off by a little bit, it's still better than using what the ruler would have given me, which is either zero or, or 10. So estimating is still more accurate, even though it's not perfect, no measurement that we make will be perfect, it's still better than using what the ruler would have given me, either zero or 10. Now I have a second ruler, so I'm gonna move this out of the way and we'll slide it up. Now the difference between these two rulers is that this ruler would be considered to be more precise. There are more markings on it. It's more finely graduated, meaning that rather than being a mark every 10 centimeters, there's now a mark every centimeter. So this has greater precision. That means now when I put this on this ruler, I'll be able to see if I was right, was it really nine centimeters or not? And now since this ruler has better precision, I'll be expected to get one more place. So on the first ruler, I could not get any places after the decimal because even this number was estimated. Now on the next ruler, I should be able to get down below to get at least one place below the, the decimal. So just like I did with the previous one, I'm going to do my best to try and line this up on the left side with the zero. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is let's zoom in just a little bit so that you'll be able to see a little bit more closely. Okay, so I, I was correct in the sense that it is closest, if I had to choose between all the centimeter markings, it is closest to the nine. But because it turns out to be a little bit before the nine, 
That means that I would actually pick as my first number eight. So I would say that this is eight centimeters long, but it's a little bit more than eight centimeters. So now I need to estimate that next digit. I'll be able to get a more precise reading from this ruler than from the previous one because of these extra markings. So using the same technique, I look to see if it's at about the halfway point. I personally feel like it is definitely more than the halfway point. So now I have to choose between six, seven, eight, or nine. I personally feel like it is well past the halfway point, but it's, it's still a pretty good distance away from the nine. So personally for me, I would probably estimate that that last digit is going to be an eight. So let me zoom out a little bit. And I would estimate that using this one, that it is eight. Now that's not an estimated digit. I know it's eight. The estimated digit is this next one, and I feel that that is probably also an eight. So 8.8 .8 centimeters is what I would, would be the most precise measurement that I could get from this device. All the numbers that I could read, and then plus one estimated digit. So I have one last ruler. I'll move this out of the way, and I'll slide this one up. So just like the improvement of the last ruler, where instead of having every 10 centimeters I have markings, I had every centimeter. Now, not only do I have all the centimeters marked, but I have 10 marks between each of the centimeters. So these are now, each of these marks would represent one millimeter. And by dividing it more finely, I should be able to read if I was correct, is it really 8.8 .8, or maybe it's a little bit above or below it. And now I should be able to get one more digit because this one will tell me, will allow me to read this digit now I can estimate the next digit and get even a little bit better precision with my measurement. So just like I did with the last ones, we'll line up on the left side as best I can on the zero. And just like we did with the last one, let's zoom in just a little bit to see if we can't see a little bit more clearly. Okay, so for me, it does look like it is almost exactly on that line that represents the eight. So I, I was correct. It is actually 8.8, .8, but now I need to estimate the next digit. There's a little bit of a dilemma though, because it looks like this one, the edge of this is almost exactly on the line that represents 8.8. .8. So then what do I estimate to be the next digit? If it was a little bit past 8.8, .8, then I would say 8.81 or 8.82. If it was a little bit below 8.8, .8, I would say 8.79 or 8.78. .8. But in this case, because I ex feel like I'm almost exactly on the 8.8, .8, I would estimate that this number is 8.8. .8. These are all the digits that I can read. And then since I feel like I'm exactly on the line that represents eight, I would estimate that my next digit must be a zero. So this one is 8.80 centimeters. So with each of the rulers, I was able to get a little bit better precision. And as a result, my measurement went from being nine centimeters, which was the best I could do with this ruler, to 8.8 .8 centimeters, which is the best I could do with this ruler, to finally 8.80, the best that I can do with this ruler. I can't read the next digit because I would need to have even more finely graduated lines in order to be able to see that. So this is basically the idea of, of measuring with precision, and that is that we want to read whatever we can read from the device, and then we want to estimate that last digit. That last digit will always have a little bit of uncertainty to it. There'll be a small error in it. And even though there's a small error in it, it's still better than leaving the number off and not even using the device at all. So there are basically just two steps to measuring with precision. First of all, you should read all of the numbers that the measuring device can show. So you read everything that you can read, and then that brings you to the last digit, which will be your estimated digit, the digit in which there will be some uncertainty. It won't be perfect, but it will still be better than not estimating at all. So we're going to estimate the last digit
and this is called the uncertain digit. And there's just basic principles that you should ask yourself. The, the question basically that you're going to start off with to kind of guide you as to what do you pick for that last digit is, the question you're going to ask yourself is, is it more or less than half? And this is something that, while you haven't practiced it a lot, most people are pretty good at it. They can generally tell if a number is exactly on the halfway point or a little bit before the halfway point or a little bit after the halfway point. So there are basically four things that might happen. So the first thing that might happen is that it is less, less than the halfway point. So if it's less than the halfway point, your choices are picking the numbers one through four. If it's exactly on the halfway point, then obviously you would pick the number five. If it's more than the halfway point, you're going to choose from the numbers 6 through 9. And at least one last possibility, and that is that it would be exactly on the line, and then you would choose that last digit to be a 0. So just so that in your notes, when you go to look at, at example problems that you might be asked to, to read as precisely as possible, let's make a quick ruler. We'll make a, an enlarged version of the ruler. I'm going to just put a small section of the ruler. I'm going to start with the number 3. I'm going to make large gaps between the smaller divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And on the 10th one, I'll put the number 4. I apologize. So I created large gaps, so this were sort of zoomed in on a ruler. This might be the 3 centimeter mark, and here's the 4 centimeter mark. And this would be 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 9. And then I would have 4.0. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So there's one possibility is that it would be less than halfway. So for example, less than halfway might be something like this. So between 3.1 and 3.2, I put an arrow that is less than the halfway point. So here's the halfway point between 3.1 and 3.2, and I want less than the halfway point. So this measurement would be clearly 3.1, and then I need to estimate what that next digit would be. Now since it's much less than the halfway point, I would probably estimate that that last, next digit is either a 1 or a 2. For me, I'm going to go with 1 for this one, so I would say 3.11. This last digit is my estimated digit, the 3 and the 1 are not estimated. I read those. Here's the 3, here's the point 1. It's that last digit is the one that I, that I estimated. So let's put one as close as we can to the exact halfway point. So if I have a measurement that comes out to be exactly between two of the markings, then I would choose, this is 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. Then I would estimate, I'm not, not estimating these digits, but I would estimate that that next digit then must be a 5. Another possibility is that it would be more than the halfway point, so let's try this one. So I put a marking very close to the 3.7, here's 3.5, 3.6, 3 3.7. So this is clearly 3.6. And then now we need to estimate that last digit. So this is past the halfway point, but not too close to this one. I would estimate that this is either an 8. If you said it was a 9, though, I, I think that's fair enough. That's, it's probably somewhere between 8 and 9. So either one of those two, 3.68 or 3.69, those would both be good numbers. Okay. The last possibility is it comes out to be exactly on one of the marked lines that are on the ruler or the measuring device. So in that case... We would be looking at something like this. So here's the line that represents 3.9. And since it comes out exactly on the line, I would estimate that that next digit must be a 0. If it was a little bit past 3.9, I would say 3.91. If it was a little bit before the 3.9, then I would say 3.89 or 3.88 possibly. But in this case, it comes out exactly on the line, so I know that next digit must be a 0. 
So this is the basic technique you would use with any device, whether it be a thermometer, a graduated cylinder, any kind of ruler or meter stick, any kind of analog device, which requires you to read numbers off of a scale. You read everything that you can, all the numbers that the device will show, and then you estimate that last digit, the uncertain digit, it's not perfect, but still better than not having it. And you simply ask yourself the question, is it more or less than half? And on the basis of that question, you'll have four possible choices, and then you'll make your best choice from among those. So hopefully this will help you with making better measurements in the future.